Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically explain the assumptions taken into consideration in the theory of thin plate bending, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First of all, it's to note that the theory of thin plate bending was developed in 1888 by the English mathematician Lowe. This theory presents a 2D mathematical model that permits to determine the stresses and uh, the deformation in uh, a bent thin plate, of course subjected to external forces and external moments as it is depicted by the model that you see now in this slide. This theory takes into consideration certain assumptions uh, related to uh, the works of uh, uh, the physicist or the German physicist Kirchhoff, hence their names Kirchhoff assumptions. It's to note also that the theory of thin plate bending can be considered as an extension of uh, Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Now I'll explain the Kirchhoff assumptions. So the first assumption states that the plate material should be isotropic and homogeneous. What does it mean this? The model that you see now in this slide presents on the left a homogeneous material but not isotropic and on the right an isotropic material but not homogeneous. For the homogeneous material, the model uh, depict, depicts that the properties should be the same in all locations of the material, in all points of the material. And for the, for the isotropic material, the properties should be the same in all the directions of the material. So when we say that the material should be both isotropic and homogeneous, this means that the properties should be the same at any location as a homogeneous material and also in any direction as an isotropic material. Now I'll explain the second assumption that uh, states that the deflection should be small compared to the plate thickness. So we consider a bent thin plate. Uh, the thin plate is in the plane defined by the direction x and y. So the deflection will be obviously along the z direction and we consider any direction of the plate denoted by n and we will examine the deflection along this uh, direction n so uh, we have the deflection as i said along the z direction we have the plate uh, the thin plate before uh, bending and this plate is defined by its middle surface and its uh, thickness t and uh, the plate after bending is depicted here, as you can see in red. And uh, the, at a considerate point, we can, uh, we can determine the deflection of the plate denoted by W. It's to note here that the thickness and the deflection are amplified for reasons of visual clarity. The second assumption here states that the deflection W should be negligible compared to the thickness of the plate T. Now I'll explain the third assumption which states that the stresses associated to the thickness direction should be neglected. So we have a plate for example and as you can see here the thickness direction is the Z direction. If this plate is subjected to an external loading we have an internal stresses at any point of this plate. So we consider a point depicted here in red. The stress state in this point is defined by the stress tensor. And I explained this in detail in a previous video. The third assumption states that the stresses associated to the thickness direction, which is the Z direction in this case, should be neglected. So we obtain finally a 2D stress state as it is indicated in this slide. The fourth assumption states that the implant forces should be negligible. So based on the model that you see now in this uh, slide, it's uh, an infinitesimal portion of a plate with dimensions dx and dy along x and y respectively, and z is the thickness direction. In general, the forces ap applied in this infinitesimal portion 
are shear forces depicted here in blue qx and qy and also we have the in-plane forces depicted here in red this in-plane forces should be negligible so nx and ny and nxy should be equal to zero the fifth assumption is directly attributed to Kirchhoff and it states that the normal to the metal surface remains constant before and after deformation uh, as it is depicted by the model that you see now in this slide. This model depicts on the bottom the plate before deformation and uh, on the top the plate after deformation. The middle surface is uh, depicted in red and the normal to the middle surface is depicted in blue. This fifth assumption will finally uh, states that all the strains associated to the z direction, which are the normal strain epsilon z and the shear strain gamma x z and gamma y z should be equal to zero. This educational video takes and Please mention all your remarks and suggestions in the comments. Thank you very much.